My jealous brother claimed he was having an affair with my wife. I faked believing him, gathered evidence, and publicly exposed his lies. I'm Shane, 28M, and I've been married to Lucy, 27F, for two years. Our story began in college, where we met during a chaotic freshman orientation. I was the nervous kid who couldn't find his dorm, and Lucy was the confident sophomore volunteer who helped me navigate the campus. We became friends, bonding over our shared love for obscure indie bands and terrible B-movies. It wasn't until our senior year that we started dating. We were at a mutual friend's Halloween party, both dressed as characters from our favorite bad movie, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. The coincidence made us laugh, and something just clicked. We've been inseparable ever since. Our relationship was always easy, comfortable. We supported each other through grad school applications, celebrated each other's successes, and were there for the tough times too. When I proposed two years after graduation, on the same spot where we first met during orientation, Lucy didn't hesitate to say yes. Everything was perfect until my younger brother Quentin, 25M, came into the picture. To understand why this is such a big deal, you need to know a bit about our family history. Quentin and I grew up in a small town in the Midwest. Our parents ran a modest hardware store, working long hours to make ends meet. As the older brother, I often had to look after Quentin when we were kids. This responsibility, coupled with our three-year age gap, created a distance between us that never really closed. From an early age, Quentin was a handful. He was always getting into scrapes at school, picking fights with other kids, and causing trouble around the neighborhood. I remember countless nights of our parents arguing about what to do with him, their voices carrying through the thin walls of our small house. I, on the other hand, was the good kid. I got good grades, helped out at the store without being asked, and stayed out of trouble. This stark contrast between us only widened the gap in our relationship. As we got older, things got worse. In high school, Quentin fell in with a rough crowd. He started drinking, staying out late, and his grades plummeted. I was busy with AP classes, college applications, and my part-time job at the local library. We were living in the same house, but it felt like we were worlds apart. The night before I left for college was particularly bad. Quentin, drunk and angry, accused me of abandoning the family. He said I thought I was too good for them, that I was selfish for leaving. Our parents tried to intervene, but it ended with Quentin storming out and not coming home until the next day, long after I'd left for school. During my college years, I heard bits and pieces about Quentin from our parents. He dropped out of high school, got his GED, and bounced between dead-end jobs. There were a few run-ins with the law, mostly misdemeanors that our parents managed to smooth over. I felt guilty for not being there, but I was also relieved to be away from the constant drama. It wasn't until Lucy and I got engaged that Quentin suddenly became interested in our lives. He started showing up at our apartment unannounced, always wanting to hang out. At first, I thought he was just trying to be supportive, maybe even make amends for our rocky past. But things quickly took a weird turn. One night, about a month before our wedding, Lucy told me Quentin had been texting her constantly. She showed me the messages, and they were borderline flirtatious. There were late-night texts asking what she was doing, compliments on her photos, inside jokes I wasn't part of. It made me uncomfortable, but Lucy assured me she had been keeping things friendly but distant. I confronted Quentin about it, cornering him after a family dinner. He laughed it off, saying he was just being friendly, trying to welcome Lucy to the family. He accused me of being paranoid and possessive. I told him to back off, and he seemed to listen, but there was a glint in his eye that made me uneasy. The wedding day came, and to my surprise, Quentin was on his best behavior. He gave a nice speech, cracking jokes about our childhood and welcoming Lucy to the family. He even helped with some last-minute arrangements when our flower delivery was late. I started to think that maybe he had finally grown up and accepted our relationship. For the next two years, things were relatively peaceful. Quentin would show up to family events, be polite to Lucy, and we managed to coexist without any major incidents. I started to let my guard down, thinking we had finally moved past our issues. That all changed last week. Lucy and I were having dinner at my parents' house, a monthly tradition we'd started to stay connected. Quentin was there too, and he had clearly had too much to drink before arriving. As the night went on, he got louder and more obnoxious. It started with small comments, little digs at me that could be brushed off as drunk and rambling. But then he started talking about college, about how he always had a thing for Lucy back then. He mentioned specific events, parties where he claimed he and Lucy had moments. I knew these were lies, Lucy and I had been together all through college, and she had barely known Quentin existed. Lucy looked uncomfortable, shifting in her seat and trying to change the subject. My parents seemed oblivious, laughing off Quentin's comments as harmless reminiscing. But I was furious. I could see the game he was playing, trying to create doubt, to drive a wedge between Lucy and me. I pulled Quentin aside, practically dragging him into the kitchen. I told him to knock it off, that his behavior was inappropriate and hurtful. Instead of apologizing, he got angry. He said I always got everything I wanted, the grades, the girl, the success, and it wasn't fair. He accused me of never giving him a chance, of always seeing him as the screw-up little brother. Before I could respond, 
he stormed out of the house, leaving everyone in shock. The next day, I got a call from my mom. Her voice was shaky, and I could tell she had been crying. She told me Quentin had posted on social media that he and Lucy had been secretly seeing each other for months. He claimed they were in love and that Lucy was going to leave me for him. I was stunned. I knew it wasn't true, but the fact that Quentin would go this far was unbelievable. When I told Lucy, she was devastated. She wanted to confront Quentin immediately, to set the record straight. But I had a different idea. I decided to play along with Quentin's delusion. I texted him, pretending to be heartbroken and asking for details about their affair. He took the bait and started spinning an elaborate story about secret meetings and hidden feelings. He claimed they had been meeting at a cafe across town, that they had kissed after my birthday party last year, that Lucy had been unhappy in our marriage for a long time. I let this go on for a few days, gathering more and more ridiculous claims from Quentin. With each message, his lies got more outlandish. He said they had a secret language, that they had matching tattoos hidden where no one could see. He even claimed that Lucy had been planning to leave me on our upcoming anniversary trip. Then, I compiled all the messages and posted them on social media, along with a long explanation of what really happened. I exposed Quentin's lies, showing screenshots of his contradictory statements and timeline inconsistencies. I made it clear that Lucy had never been unfaithful, that this was all a product of Quentin's jealousy and instability. The fallout was immediate. Quentin deleted his social media accounts and hasn't spoken to anyone in the family since. My parents are torn between anger at Quentin and disappointment in me for publicly humiliating him. They keep saying we should have handled this privately, as a family. Lucy is relieved that the truth is out, but she's worried about the long-term effects on our family. She comes from a close-knit background and values family harmony highly. This public spectacle is far from what she's used to. Some of our friends think I went too far, that I should have taken the high road and not engaged with Quentin's lies. Others say Quentin had it coming, that his behavior was inexcusable and needed to be called out. I don't regret exposing Quentin's lies, but I'm starting to wonder if I should have handled it differently. The family is divided, and I can already imagine how awkward holiday gatherings are going to be for a long time. My mom keeps calling, crying about how her boys are fighting and how she just wants peace in the family. Was I wrong to publicly expose my brother's lies? Should I have confronted him privately instead? I'm not sure how to move forward from here, but I know I need to do something to fix this mess. The thought of losing my brother, despite our troubled history, is harder to bear than I expected. But I also can't stand by and let him disrespect my marriage and spread lies about Lucy. I find myself staying up late, replaying childhood memories, wondering where things went so wrong between Quentin and me. Could I have been a better brother? Should I have tried harder to stay connected during college? Or was this inevitable, given our different paths in life? Lucy has been my rock through all of this, but I can see the toll it's taking on her too. She didn't sign up for this family drama, and I worried that it might change how she sees me or my family. We've talked about starting our own family soon, and now I'm worried about what kind of Uncle Quentin would be, if he's even in the picture at all. I'm lost and confused, caught between protecting my marriage and salvaging my family relationships. Any advice would be appreciated. Update 1, it's been a month since I exposed Quentin's lies, and things have only gotten more complicated. I thought the truth would settle everything, but it seems to have stirred up even more drama in our family. A week after my post, Quentin finally broke his silence. He sent a group text to our family, claiming that his social media account had been hacked and that he never made those posts about Lucy. He said he had been going through a tough time and was embarrassed to tell anyone, which is why he disappeared for a while. Our parents, desperate to believe him, accepted this explanation without question. They called me and asked me to take down my post exposing Quentin, saying it was all a misunderstanding. I refused, knowing that Quentin was lying again. This led to a heated argument with my dad, who accused me of being unforgiving and holding grudges. He brought up incidents from our childhood, times when Quentin had messed up and I had refused to let it go. It made me wonder if I had always been too hard on Quentin, if I had contributed to this rift between us. Lucy and I decided to have a family meeting to clear the air once and for all. We invited our parents and Quentin to our house, determined to get to the bottom of this. The day of the meeting, I was a bundle of nerves. Lucy spent the morning stress baking, filling our house with the smell of cookies and muffins that no one would probably eat. When everyone arrived, the tension was palpable. Our mom tried to play peacemaker, suggesting we all just forget about what happened and move on. She kept bringing up happy memories from our childhood, as if reminiscing about family vacations could erase the current situation. Dad stayed quiet, looking uncomfortable and out of place in our living room. Quentin put on an act of being confused and hurt by my accusations, playing the victim card expertly. I wasn't having any of it. I pulled out my phone and played a voicemail Quentin had left me the night of the dinner, where he drunkenly confessed his feelings for Lucy and threatened to take her away from me. The look on everyone's face was priceless. Mom gasped, Dad's face turned red with anger, and Quentin. Quentin's act crumbled. He broke down, admitting that he had lied about everything. He confessed that he had always been jealous of me and wanted to hurt me by going after Lucy. As he spoke, years of resentment poured out. He talked about feeling overshadowed by me throughout our childhood, 
about the pressure of living up to the standard I had set. He revealed that he had been fired from his job months ago for inappropriate behavior towards a coworker, and had been lying to everyone about still working there. Our parents were shocked into silence. Mom started crying, saying she had failed as a mother. Dad looked years older, the weight of Quentin's revelations visibly crushing him. They had always seen Quentin's troubles as just a phase, something he would grow out of. Now, faced with the extent of his issues, they seemed lost and overwhelmed. Lucy, who had been quiet until then, finally spoke up. Her voice was steady as she told Quentin in no uncertain terms that she had never and would never have feelings for him. She said his behavior was disgusting and that he needed professional help. She also called out our parents for their enabling behavior, for always making excuses for Quentin instead of holding him accountable. The meeting ended with Quentin storming out, our mom in tears, and our dad looking defeated. They left soon after, saying they needed time to process everything. The house felt emptier after they left, the weight of unresolved issues hanging in the air. In the days that followed, we learned more about Quentin's situation. Our cousin told us that Quentin had been spiraling for months. He had been drinking heavily, picking fights in bars, and burning bridges with friends. The story about being fired was just the tip of the iceberg. Our parents, finally seeing the extent of Quentin's problems, have been trying to get him to seek help. So far, he has refused, blaming everyone else for his problems. Mom calls me daily, oscillating between defending Quentin and asking for my advice on how to help him. Dad has retreated into himself, spending long hours at the hardware store, avoiding the family drama. Lucy and I are still processing everything. We're relieved that the truth is out, but the whole situation has left us feeling drained. The stress has affected us in unexpected ways. Lucy's had trouble sleeping, often waking up from nightmares about Quentin. I find myself second-guessing every interaction I have with my family, wondering if I'm being too harsh or not firm enough. We've decided to take a short trip, just the two of us, to get away from all the drama and reconnect. We're going to the beach town where we had our first vacation as a couple. I'm hoping the familiar surroundings and happy memories will help us reset and figure out our next steps. I'm still not sure if I handled everything the right way, but I don't regret standing up for my marriage. The road ahead looks tough, especially when it comes to family relationships, but Lucy and I are determined to face it together. We've started discussing boundaries, how much we're willing to engage with Quentin in the future, what kind of relationship we want with my parents moving forward. As we pack for our trip, I find myself reflecting on the nature of family. Is blood really thicker than water? At what point do you prioritize your own peace of mind over family harmony? I don't have the answers yet, but I hope this time away will provide some clarity. The whole situation has made me appreciate Lucy even more. Her strength and support through all of this have been unwavering. It's reinforced my belief that marrying her was the best decision I ever made. Whatever happens with Quentin and my parents, I know that Lucy and I can handle it together. Update 2, it's been 6 months since my last update, and a lot has changed. Our family is still dealing with the aftermath of Quentin's actions, but we're slowly finding a new normal. After our confrontation, Quentin disappeared for a while. We later found out he had gone on a drinking binge and ended up in the hospital. It was a scary few days, waiting to hear if he would be okay. Despite everything that had happened, the thought of losing my brother hit me hard. It brought back memories of us as kids, before all the rivalry and resentment set in. This incident was the wake-up call Quentin needed. He finally agreed to get help and checked into a rehab facility. The program was intensive, requiring a 90-day stay with limited contact with the outside world. It was tough, but it gave all of us time to process and heal. While Quentin was in rehab, Lucy and I focused on strengthening our relationship. We went to couples counseling, not because we had problems, but because we wanted to make sure we had the tools to handle any future family drama. It's been incredibly helpful. We've learned better communication techniques and how to support each other through stressful situations. Our parents have been going through their own journey. They've been seeing a family therapist to work through their feelings of guilt and confusion. Mom called me one night, crying, admitting that they had failed both Quentin and me in different ways. They've apologized to Lucy and me for not believing us initially and for enabling Quentin's behavior over the years. Watching my parents grapple with their past mistakes has been eye-opening. It's made me realize that they're human too, doing their best with the tools they had. It doesn't excuse their actions, but it helps me understand them better. About two months ago, Quentin completed his rehab program. He reached out to me, asking if we could talk. I was hesitant, but Lucy encouraged me to hear him out. She reminded me that this could be a turning point for our family. We met at a neutral location, a park near our old high school. It was surreal, sitting on the same benches where we used to hang out as teenagers, now as adults trying to mend our broken relationship. Quentin looked better than he had in years. The rehab had done him good, he was clear-eyed and steady. He apologized for everything, the lies, the manipulation, the hurt he caused. He admitted that he had been dealing with undiagnosed depression and anxiety for years and had used alcohol to cope. He talked about the work he'd done in rehab, confronting his jealousy and resentment towards me. He acknowledged that he had always felt like he was living in my shadow, but realized that was his perception, not reality. I listened to him, letting him speak without interruption. 
When he finished, I told him that while I appreciated his apology, it would take time to rebuild trust. I made it clear that his relationship with Lucy and me would never be the same, but if he continued to work on himself, we could potentially have a cordial family relationship in the future. Since then, Quentin has been making efforts to make amends. He's been sober for four months now and is attending regular therapy sessions. He's also started volunteering at a local animal shelter, which seems to be giving him a sense of purpose. Seeing him take responsibility for his actions and actively work on improving himself has been both surprising and encouraging. Lucy and I have cautiously allowed Quentin back into our lives, but with clear boundaries. He's not allowed at our house unless invited, and we don't spend time with him one-on-one. So far, he's been respecting these boundaries, which is a positive sign. Our extended family has been supportive throughout this process. They've rallied around us, offering help and understanding. My aunt, who's a social worker, has been particularly helpful in guiding us through this reconciliation process. It's brought some of us closer together, which has been an unexpected silver lining. As for Lucy and me, we're doing better than ever. Going through this ordeal has made our relationship stronger. We've learned to communicate better and to always have each other's backs. We've also started talking about our future more concretely, discussing career goals, where we want to live long term, and when we might start a family of our own. We're not naive enough to think that everything is perfect now. We know there will be challenges ahead, especially as we navigate family gatherings and holidays. But we feel equipped to handle whatever comes our way. This experience has taught us a lot about family, trust, and the importance of addressing issues head on. While I wouldn't wish this situation on anyone, I'm grateful for the growth it has brought about in all of us. Update 3, it's been a year since my original post, and I wanted to give one final update on our situation. Quentin has maintained his sobriety and has been making steady progress in therapy. He's got a new job at a local community center, working with at-risk youth. It seems like he's found a way to use his past experiences to help others, which has been great for his recovery. He's even started dating someone he met through his volunteer work at the animal shelter. While our relationship is still not what it used to be, we're in a much better place. We can now have family dinners without tension, and Quentin has shown genuine remorse for his past actions. Last month, he gave a speech at his AA meeting and invited me to attend. Hearing him take responsibility for his actions in front of strangers was a powerful moment for both of us. Lucy and I have some big news, we're expecting our first child. We found out a couple of months ago and we're over the moon. The journey to this point hasn't been easy. After everything that happened with Quentin, we had to have some serious conversations about bringing a child into our complicated family dynamic. But ultimately, we decided that our love and commitment to each other was strong enough to handle anything. When we announced the pregnancy to the family, everyone was thrilled, including Quentin. He congratulated us sincerely and even offered to help set up the nursery. It was a small gesture, but it meant a lot coming from him. Our parents have come a long way too. They've become more aware of their past enabling behaviors and have been working hard to treat all their children equally. They're excited about becoming grandparents and have been incredibly supportive. Mom's already knitting baby blankets, and Dad's been researching the safest car seats on the market. As for Lucy and me, this whole experience has only made our bond stronger. We've learned to face challenges together and come out stronger on the other side. We're looking forward to this new chapter in our lives as parents. We've been attending parenting classes together and have had many late-night discussions about how we want to raise our child, always circling back to the importance of open communication and unconditional love. Looking back, I still believe I did the right thing by exposing Quentin's lies, even if my methods were unconventional. It was the catalyst that led to all of us confronting long-standing issues and ultimately healing as a family. Of course, there are moments when I wonder what would have happened if I had handled things differently, but I try not to dwell on those thoughts. We're not perfect, and we still have our moments of disagreement, but we've learned to communicate better and address problems head-on. Just last week, we had a family dinner where Quentin made a comment that could have been interpreted as insensitive. Instead of letting it fester, we addressed it right there, calmly and openly. It was a small moment, but it showed how far we've all come. I'm proud of how far we've all come. Quentin's recovery, my parents' growth, Lucy's strength, and my own personal development, it's all been part of this journey. As we prepare for the arrival of our little one, I'm filled with hope for the future. Our family has been through a lot, but we've emerged stronger, wiser, and more united. It's been a long and sometimes difficult journey, but I wouldn't change it for anything. The nursery is almost ready, painted in soft yellows and greens. Sometimes I stand in there, imagining our child growing up, and I'm filled with a mix of excitement and nerves. I know there will be challenges ahead, parenthood, continuing to navigate our family dynamics, balancing our careers with our growing family. But after everything we've been through, I feel ready to face whatever comes our way. This will be my last update. As we close this chapter and begin a new one, I want to thank everyone who offered advice and support throughout this journey. Your words helped more than you know. Here's to new beginnings and the endless possibilities that lie ahead.